Welcome to another episode of The Catholic Novel. Uh, I should say right away that it's not quite a novel. Uh, in the introduction to the uh, story, Green says, this story was, never, was not written to be read, it was written to be put on a movie screen. Uh, if you've been watching this series at all, first of all, you know that I'm a big Graham Greene fan. I think he was the greatest novelist in the 20th century writing Eng English. Incidentally, he never won the Nobel Prize for Literature. He never won. And I found out years later that there was someone on the board who just did not like him and prevented him from getting the, the prize. And they gave the prize to other writers who, in my opinion, did not match Graham Greene. But anyway, uh, Greene at the beginning says writers have different habits in terms of remembering ideas or jotting down notes. Some use notebooks. And he said years ago, he wrote a sentence, something like this. I was shocked to see Harry Lyme because I had attended his burial before that meeting. And he wrote, it, he wrote it on an envelope. And then after the success of the film The Fallen Idol, directed by Cara Reed and produced by Alexander Corda, Corda came to Green and he, said to, he asked him to write a story for the screen about post-war Vienna. Uh, this is a time when uh, post-war Vienna was uh, ruled by four powers, Soviets, the United States, French and British. And Green found the envelope and found the sentence and then wrote this whole story about Harry Lyme. Uh, I think it's amazing how creative artists work. You know, I, I, I basically use Jacques Maritain, but every so often you read something and say, how did that come about? Anyway, uh, Green is my favorite author. He uh, has often been described by critics as writing in, in a cinema-like way, that his images are so real they almost begged to be put on the screen, and I, I agree with that completely. But his films have had a strange history in terms of movies. Uh, he, I think 16 of his films, excuse me, 16 of his books have been turned into film, and some of them more than once. Uh, I know The End of the Fair was turned into a film twice. But for whatever reason, uh, they never seem to be able or hardly ever get the religious part right. Now, some great directors film some of these 16 films, Otto Preminger, John Ford, who some people think is the greatest American director of all time, uh, Fritz Lang, uh, Joseph Mankiewicz, uh, Peter Glenville, uh, Edward Dimitrik. Uh, I'm, I'm going to use two examples on, on how strange some, some films termed, turned out if you read the novels, all right? The first one is The Power and the Glory, which was turned into the film The Fugitive with Henry Fonda, directed by John Ford. It's a pretty good movie. It's got almost nothing to do with the novel. Why? Because in the 1940s, even a great director like John Ford could not make a movie in which a priest had committed fornication and fathered an illegitimate child and also was a whiskey priest. Uh, also, the uh, film was made of The Heart of the Matter, starring Trevor Howard, who in some ways I think is the quintessential green character. Now, in the novel, there is a big, big problem. The main character, Scobie, commits suicide. And the question green uh, dramatizes, and believe me, when you read it in the novel, it becomes a real problem. Is Scobie going to hell, or is he a saint? He seems to commit suicide out of pity and love for two other human beings. He doesn't see any other way to help them. By removing himself, he thinks he's going to help them. Well, when they made the movie, they had Scobie murdered. <laughs> I mean, it's unbelievable. The whole point of the novel, they, they, they just took out and made him, made him a victim of a murder. So those are the two extreme examples, but it's happened over and over again. That they're, so for some reason, they've had trouble um, getting the religious dimension. Now, I think The Third Man is the best film ever made uh, of something that Graham Greene wrote. Some very prestigious uh, film society in Britain voted the, uh, voted the Third Man as the greatest British film ever made. And that's quite a statement, uh, but I, I, can, I can accept it. It is a great movie. Now, in the, in the novel, uh, the main character, I guess, is Holly Martins. He's a friend of Harry Lyme, and Harry Lyme has sent him a note saying, come on over to, to uh, Vienna. Uh, I think I've got a job for you. And so he goes over, and as, as the plot develops, you see that throughout their relationship, uh, Holly Martins has been made a fool of by uh, Harry Lyme. Whenever Harry Lyme comes up with some you know, wild, wild uh, scheme, Holly Martins is always left holding the bag. By the way, in the, no in the, uh, in the treatment that, uh, that Green wrote, the, the, the main character's name was Rollo, but in the movie, Joseph Cotton objected to that name, so they made it Holly. Uh, so he gets there and he finds out that uh, Harry Lyme was, was uh, killed 
by a, a car accident. A car r ran over him. And as the plot develops, you discover he was not killed at all. He's been involved in black market selling of penicillin uh, and with, a, with a group of other racketeers like himself. And the penicillin, they water it down so they can stretch it further. And this kills some children and maims others. So uh, Martins first doesn't believe Harry has done anything wrong. But when he finds out what he, does, what he did, he meets him in a lift over, uh, over Vienna. You know, one of, these, one of these lifts high, high up in the air. So when you look down, the people look just like dots. And in the written treatment, um, Holly says to him, uh, you used to be a Catholic. And Harry Lyme says, oh, I still believe in God and mercy, all of that. I'm not hurting their souls. And he says, look down at those little specks. If someone told you you could get 20,000 uh, pounds for every one of those specks, would you be shocked? Or would you, be, would you immediately start counting specks, OK? Um, the, uh, Harry Lyme seems to be a perfect example of a total narcissist. There's a wonderful line uh, Green comes up with. He says, when Harry woke up in the morning happy, he just presumed that the whole world was happy. I mean, talk about having ev everything in your life center around, you know, around yourself and this world, OK? And, and your world matches the world. And you're happy, so everybody s supposedly should be happy. Um, what what uh, uh, critics of Green's writing uh, have sometimes described his milieu as Greenland. And what they meant by Greenland was a dark, dangerous uh, uh, terrain, uh, kind of sleazy, populated by sinners, and populated by people who were in flight, sometimes physical flight, sometimes spiritual flight, and sometimes both. Green did not like that term, but I think, uh, I think, I think it does describe many of his, of his novels. Matter of fact, I, I can't think of one novel of Graham Greene's in which there's a happily married couple. There always seems to be something wrong in a human relationship. Now, uh, what Carol Reed, the director of the movie Third Man is, he just nails it perfectly. Uh, to kind of suggest Greenland, he uses several tricks. First of all, the lighting is terrific. Often the, often the camera angles are tilted, almost suggesting what a crooked world this is. And he gets as the star, as the actor to perform, Harry Lyme, Orson Welles. And this is before Orson Welles got, you know, way, way overweight. Uh, he just conveys this sinister narcissism. You know, the world revolves around him. Now, my, the, my, my reading of the text and my seeing of the film, I've seen the film several times, is he invited Holly over because he was going to arrange that he would hold the bag again, get stuck with the bag again, and get arrested, you know, for selling this penicillin and so on. So uh, when they're up in the lift, he suggests that uh, he has a gun and he could easily shoot Holly and throw him out. And, and, and not, he didn't think the police would be too concerned looking for a bullet wound if someone had fallen out of one of these lifts. And then he realizes it's too late for that, that the police already know that he's not dead. Uh, they've dug up the grave and they found the, the man that he murdered. So that's, that's not it. And so at the end, uh, Holly agrees to help the police catch him because of, he's just he's so shocked at this, uh, you know, this selling of penicillin. And that's a very exciting scene. On the text, it's, in the text, it's exciting, but it's also exciting on the screen. And uh, I'm, I'm, offer, I'm telling you a spoiler alert, alert now, OK? When uh, Harry Lyme tries to escape by running through the sewers of Vienna, but the police are on to him, and they block him off and catch him. And uh, apparently, shooting at Holly, intending to ki ki kill Holly, the bullet hits a wall and goes off and kills a really innocent policeman, kind of a, a really likable guy, an innocent guy, OK? And uh, Holly takes the gun and goes after his friend, and he finds him wounded trying to get out of the cellar, but he doesn't have the strength. And the police are waiting for him anyway uh, on the street. And he says, uh, Harry Lyme says, bloody fool. And Holly says, did he mean me or did he mean himself? Was this some kind of act of contrition that he was making? Uh, so, uh, you know, as I read that, I thought, Green cannot help bringing the, uh, you know, the, the Catholic dimension into it. Uh, in, in, the, in the text, he says, you used to be a Catholic. In the film, he says, you used to believe in God. But the, it's the same point is being made. You know, how could, can you possibly live this way if, you, if you're still a Catholic and if you believe in God? And uh, Harry Lyme's uh, position is, you know, well, they're better off. 
they're better off. Uh, you know, uh, I'm not attacking anybody's soul. So, uh, you know, I think when I, if, you have, if you really meet a, a narcissist, it's kind of frightening. It's, it's sort of impossible to relate to them, to get through to them at all, okay? Uh, now, uh, so here's why I say it would be a Catholic novel. I gave you two examples. You used to be a Catholic. Oh, yes, I still believe. And then at the end, was that an act of contrition? Was he talking about himself? Bloody fool that I've been. Uh, but it's also Catholic in its depiction of evil. Um, I'm, I'm trying, there, was a, there was a critic, Pauline Kael, who claimed certain film directors depicted evil so well because of their Catholic backgrounds. And that makes a great deal of sense to me. I, I don't think Carol Reed was a Catholic, but Green's description of post-war Vienna you know, it's, it's sleazy, everybody's got a racket, everybody's got an angle, and here is this man who claims he's still a believing Catholic, but he's, he's, got, the worst, he's got the worst crime, that, uh, he's doing the worst crime that's, you know, it's inhuman, uh, giving penicillin that will kill kids or maim kids. So I would say the two things, the mystery of evil is very dramatically depicted, and also the, the Catholic dimension which is, not, you know, it's not, it's not mentioned many times, but it is mentioned at key points. Now, I, I'm wondering, why did, they, why did they cut that piece of dialogue out and change it to, you believe in God? Who knows? Who knows? I don't know whether they thought it would distract people. I don't know. Uh, and I could go through, excuse me, I could go through other uh, Graham Greene uh, scripts that were turned into films in which you say, well, why did they do it this way? Uh, but the two I gave were good enough. Okay, so um, the mystery of uh, an artist creating is, is a, very good, uh, a very good study could be made of this novel. A line that he, that he thought, thought of years before he was asked to write the screenplay, and he, he wrote it on a, an envelope. It's almost like Abe Lincoln doing the Gettysburg Address. And when he was asked to do this, this uh, script, it came back to him. And I, I'm trying to imagine what was, the what, what was he thinking of when he, when he first wrote it. Um, you know, Harry Lyme and... Uh, I thought I saw him buried, and now I see that he's alive. And then he, then he, then he builds the whole thing around that, and Cara Reed is able to nail it down. He just nails it down. Uh, this, this really is the best film ever made from anything that Graham Greene ever wrote. So here's what I'm suggesting. Read the, uh, I, won't, I, I don't call it a novel. I would call it a novella. Read it. You will find it. Uh, you, you, you won't be able to put it down. And then watch the film. Um, and, and you'll also notice how the music adds tremendously. Uh, Cara Reed was, I think, at a, a nightclub or some kind of a dinner, and he heard someone playing a zither. And he knew that was the, that was the instrument he was going to use, and he uses it all through. Now, here, here goes nothing. Ready? Da 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 You can get on your computer, just put down theme for the third man, okay? This, this is, in a strange way, this is a really entertaining novel, and it's a great film. <laughs>